Hey guys, and welcome back to Regrets It. Brexit England, Northern Ireland and Eastern Europe. And in Brexit England, the NHS it now work it now work it now work NHS it now work it now work it now work NHS it now work it now work it now work. If you have a stroke NHS it now work. You have a heart attack and you end up in the dump. They carry it in an ambulance, but you leave in a hearse. Oh my God. Yeah, you thought I was freestyling, didn't you? No, I just wrote that five minutes ago. But you know, the, the problem with that, yeah, is that I was going to go with um, you leave in a mortuary truck. But no, because that's what you will be leaving in. Actually, you won't. Because I was then going to go with um, them carry them carry it to the mortuary, they punt a stretcher, right? But I thought, no. Mm -mm. But I thought you leave in a hearse. That works, but that's not the truth. The truth is, this is going to push you ass straight down to the mortuary, right? And the same in the same bed that you're in, carry you straight there, because our NHS, our NHS, right? You know how the you know how the, the Tories are always saying our wonderful NHS all the time. If you notice, all the time, our wonderful NHS. Out of twenty countries, we are nineteenth, not Juneteenth. No, that's gone. 19th out of out of 20 countries and on some of the services we are the worst and you know do you know who we, you know the only country below us is america every minute in america people get shot in the fucking head they're the only you know they're, they're, they're behind us the 20th what's this what what's the one common denominator between those two between these two countries america and great britain Hmm? What's the one common denominator? All of our politicians, yeah, are sold out to big business. All of them. Especially, especially more so the Tories. You know, you know, I don't know how much Labour, I don't know how much Labour's involved in this, or the, you know, or the Liberal Democrats, but you know, they a lot of them right, have you know, they're sold out to big business. I mean, it's much more so in America because you've got people like the NRA who just blatantly give, you know, millions and millions of dollars over. Because, I mean, in America, I mean, you know, to become a senator, it's going to cost you, it's gonna, you know, it's going to cost you probably between 50 million and 100 million dollars. And to become president in America, you know, that's, that's over a billion, that's over a billion dollars. So, you see, so, that, so that's why these people are run by big business. But it's, it's, it is all our fault right for allowing them to do this to us right you know it's not you know they can only do this to us right by vote especially nowadays they can only do this to us by vote so they have so 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 that's so to get us to vote to get us to vote for this so our nhs out of all of you know because they would have tested they would have put this up against um all modern services all first world countries right you know this is not you know they haven't put us against a lot of second world or third world countries they've put us up against the, all the first world countries and we are second to last i mean when you when they check out some of the services right like you know if you need it like for example everybody's down after COVID. But, you know, before I say that, right, one thing I'll say is this, right, is that our services before the pandemic, right, was already in the toilet. Right? Our services was already really bad before the pandemic. So after the pandemic now, you know, if you if you wanted something like a um, a knee operation, like on the NHS, you can have a knee operation on the NHS because you know if, if you're paying for it, you can have it. You you, you can have it tomorrow if you're paying for it. But you know if you're having a knee operation, for example, right, on the NHS, our services after after um, COVID after the pandemic, yeah, is down by something like forty six percent, right in. You know, in places like Germany or Belgium or, you know, a lot of these places, theirs is down by 4%. I mean, in fact, ours, you know, if you've got a hip operation in this country, it's 68% down from since the end of the pandemic. And and all of the others was was between 2 and 6% down. We are 60-odd percent down. 
they're between two and six percent. So you see, we've got to this, 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 this where we got to now. We've got to here for a reason, right? And that reason is exactly the same reason as Brexit, and that is racism, and that is just ridiculously stupid. The way how we've got here, because do you what we've got to understand about this country now? Yeah, is that people are leaving this country at a rate of knots. They're going. Doctors, nurses, teachers, anaesthetists, dentists, all of these type of people are off. You know, those pe a lot of those people are lefties. So you know, and they don't want to, and they can't work in an NHS service that's falling to pieces, buildings falling to pieces, right? You know, haven't got enough staff. You know, there's so many staff members, right, that are working for agencies. They're there every day, but they're just working for an agency because they can get paid more money for the agency which doesn't bode very well because obviously you know that every single agency worker in the hospital, you know, it's, it's, costing, it's costing us much more money. And those people yeah, who own those agencies, yeah, they don't live in this country. I'm not, saying that, I'm not saying that they're foreigners, but a lot of those guys will be lords and stuff like that. So you could, you know, you, you, you could have a hundred, you could have a hundred um, foreign nurses, Jamaican nurses or, you know, nurses from, you know, the Philippines or, or from, you know, or from China. There are a hundred of them, right? You've got no chance in getting them in the NHS. You'd have no chance, right? Because that's all locked. That's all locked up already. So you know. So you know. You you know what you'd have one day. You'd have one of those companies phone you and say to you, "Listen, we need some of your workers." So you could get in that way, but direct access, you'd never get that because that's all. That's all taken up a long time ago. And as I said. There's only one thing, right, that has got us the worst NHS figures ever. 19th out of 20 countries. And that is bigotry, xenophobia, racism. Okay, that is the right, that's how we've got here. And welcome back to By Any Means Necessary. Thank you so much for all your messages sent me. A special thanks to everybody who signed up to my channel. I feel so blessed with so much people that signed up. So thank you so much for that. I'll go for all your messages. I'll answer as many as I can, but I will like all your messages for definite. And Rishi Sunak has said that we must hold our nerves. You know, I've always said, right, that these economists, they're just gamblers. Right, so... Where would you say that, that a sentence like that, right, is most beneficial, right? To you, while you're trying to pay your, 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 your mortgage or your, or your rent to put food on the table, to put, to put shoes and clothing on your children's back and foots? Or do you think a statement like that is more useful while you're at the poker table? And say, hold your nerve, hold your nerve, hold your nerve, hold your nerve. Where do you think it's more useful to you? Is it useful to you while you're going to work busting your back, busting your ankles, right? Your calves and everything is hurting. While Rishi Sunak is saying to you, hold your nerve. The multi-millionaire married to a billionaire, a man who has never had a hard day in his life. Ever. Rishi Sunak has, you know, he's coming from a family yeah, who's had a minimum of 200 grand going into it every year. Minimum. You know, people like that, yeah, people like um, his parents, right? You know, they don't, you know, they don't just run one business. A lot of times they run several different businesses, you know, and they buy properties and things like that, especially when you've got that type of money, because, you know, that's, that's, what, that's what those people do with that type of money. They can afford to send him to Winchester, okay? So people think that Rishi Sunak can somehow be in touch. I mean, you'd have to have a screw loose. But you know, as you know, Rishi Sunak, yeah, is not a he's not a voted in politician. Well, he's voted in politician, but he's not a voted in prime minister. Not by he hasn't been tested. You know, he hasn't been tested by the people, right? And you know, the minute he gets tested by the people, he's going to lose because he's Asian. Okay, so that's why he's going to lose because he's Asian. Nothing else. That's the main reason why he's going to lose because he's Asian. 
and not in the way I'm not saying Asian in the way how um, how let me just think of who how Nigel Farage would be saying it well, no, you're bloody Asian but it's not P word but I'm telling you straight right Rich is, he's gonna lose because he's Asian right not because not because he's because he's rich and you know his wife's a billionaire and they you know and they have you know and they have trouble with their taxes not to do with that. Right? Or the fact that you know, in this type of economy, people like him are making more money than you could ever imagine, because that's what you know, that's what these, a lot of these guys are. They, these, you know, they you know they can make a lot of money out of disaster. Disaster capitalists can make a lot of money, and right now Britain is in a completely disastrous place, unfortunately. You know, but I mean, a mendacious, narcissistic sociopath is what Ben Elton called Rishi Sunak on the BBC yesterday morning. I was like, wow. Should he be saying that? But then, if you're going to go to Ben Elton, yeah, just after um, just after you've interviewed the Prime Minister and ask Ben Elton what he thinks about it, then obviously, that's what you're going to get. So, you know, I mean, what else What else was the BBC expecting to ask asking Ben Elton something like that? But, you know, the Tories, the right wing, are going absolutely crazy over it. They're going really, really mad up in here. Do you know what I mean? Like, as if to say, you know, as if to say it's not true, because, you know, it is true, because Rishi Sunak is not in touch. He's, he's so far out of touch with um, with the working classes, the poor, the less well-off, you know, that he already said he hasn't got any friends from the working classes. You know, he's grown up a whole life of not knowing anybody from the working classes. So, you know, so if people think that um, someone like Rishi Sunak can empathise with anybody, I mean, the man, the man can't even use a, 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 a debit card or credit card, which, whichever one it was. He can't use it because he's never, because, you know, for so many years, he probably hasn't had to use one, you know, because he is that wealthy that he will just, that, you know, that everything will be done for him. You know, he won't have to do anything. I mean, throughout his life, he won't really have to do anything. You've got £700 million, pounds, yeah? Pointless having all that money and doing, and, and doing stuff for yourself. Why, would, why are you doing stuff for yourself if you've got all that money? I mean, that's just stupid. You get people to drive you. You get people... Well, you, you fly on your own plane. But you get people to fly you. You, you know, you have your own yacht, obviously. But you get people to man it for you. <laughs> I mean, you know, don't, you know, you know, you're not, you know, you're not sailing the yacht yourself. I mean, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> you know, only people who who could just about scrape by to buy a yacht will be sailing it themselves, <laughs> right? But, you know, rich people don't say that. that shit. They've got staff to do that shit. So um, this is the reason why, you know, Ben Elton would have said what he said about um, Rishi Sunak, because Rishi Sunak would be completely out of touch. And, you know, um, Rishi Sunak resigned from the previous government, so that doesn't, you know... <laughs> That you know that doesn't make him you know not responsible for for what the Johnson government done because he was up there with Boris Johnson all the time, so. And then we've had oh, um, I don't know if you've seen the story about Sarah Ferguson because Sarah Ferguson um, had a cancer check two weeks ago, right? and they picked something up and she's already had her operation. And things should really work like that for everybody. I mean, you know, because you know, when um, things it should really work like that for everybody, right? Sarah Ferguson went to the um, NHS first of all, right? So the NHS found something in there, and then she went to a private hospital and had it done just like that because she had it done in the hospital where, the, where all the royals go to. So to go to that hospital, yeah, you have to be either royal or bloody well very very rich. Right, because you know you've got to imagine that you could just you know just down the corridor you could have uh, one of the royals. So to even get into that hospital, you had to be really wealthy. So that you know, you, you just, let's put it this way, right? You have to have a shed load of money to get into that hospital, right? So um, you know, so she got a straight, literally straight away. It should work like that for everybody, but it doesn't. Not in this country, because right now, right, if you go into, um, I should have done this with the NHS. With the NHS in the beginning, you know, right? But if you go into um hospital, right, there's a good chance you're going to die, especially if you go in with like a stroke or you go in with a heart attack, 
right? Those two things, Britain is worst in the world at. When Tony Blair, you know, when Tony Blair took over, I think there was like something like an 18 months wait for cancer treatment. And then by the time he, by the time he left, well, by the, well I'm, sure, I'm sure the last, 13 years 13 years ago i'm sure that we was um it was like an 18 week wait and now you've got a good chance you've got a very a very very good chance of dying that's it a modern progressive society free of homelessness says his royal highness the prince of wales william um windsor william windsor now, a lot of people have said, "Oh, well, because he's given because because apparently he's, uh, he's given over three million pounds from his um, from his charities or something like that." Which, which you know, obviously to him is nothing. You know, it's the, you know I mean that that's absolutely nothing. But you see, the difference is, yeah, that you know, if this was your MP saying what he's saying, yeah, he would get no traction, or she would get no traction, or they, or them would get no traction. But, right, with William saying it, I mean, it's going to, you know, because it's all over the front pages. So that's the only, that's the only thing that gives, that gives me real hope. And, and now that he started on this track, I don't think he can really take it back. But you see, the, the good thing is the, you know, the influence that he can bring to that would be, should, should be quite good. Just the influence that he can bring to it. And let's do some Brexit stories because you know what? <sighs> Brexit's going really badly. Brexit has hamstrung us. It's time we truly take back control, says Stella Creasy. And she had me creasing up with laughter because these people are just still, they're just still cuckoo, absolutely wacky. Right? Because I just, you know, just ask them, what do you, what is the benefit, what would the benefits be? Tell us, right, what this real Brexit is. I don't think that these people will stop until things just get a lot worse. And British meat and fish exports have slumped to less than half they was before the referendum. And I mean, obviously that's, you know, so, you know, when, they, when, they're, when they're telling you about, you know, that Brexit's not affecting this and Brexit's not affecting that. And so this is just, it's just ridiculous. I mean, you'd have to wear in blinkers. Right, or being kicked in the head by a horse or a donkey uh, or you know even a zebra would do kicked in the head right by some type of wildlife because you know to even contemplate what they're to even sorry to even believe what they're saying that you know that brexit's inflation is not um sorry that it, that brexit doesn't cause inflation i mean it's just it's just completely ridiculous. It is Brexit that has cranked up inflation. Don't blame the banks. <laughs> no, I forgot I'd written that down. <laughs> Don't blame the banks for inflation. And it's true. I mean, you know, you give the banks, you've given the banks nothing to work with. Right, you know, you've destroyed the export trade. You know, you you've made the import trade so expensive, right? And you're saying to the banks, "Oh, well, inflation's your fault." Say seriously, do you know what I mean? That's <clears throat> it's like you buying stale sweets from the off license, and then you take them back to the sweet shop and say, "Listen, these sweets are stale." People say, "Well, you didn't even buy the sweets here. Get out." <laughs> Seriously, it's crazy. It's not the bank's fault. Nothing to do with the banks, right? If if the government, uh, if the if the government was running the economy properly, right, then they wouldn't have to be turning around and saying to, and, and blaming the banks for for the rise in inflation because they'd be running the economy properly. And the Bank of England, the the bank, yeah, the Bank of England wouldn't have to be keep keep putting up um putting up um interest rates. You know, you call it the Bank of England because it's independent now, right? I, I guarantee that. I suppose, I suppose that means they must have sold it off then, because the Bank of England surely should. Because uh, you know when they say that you know all this money is owed, because I, 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 I always say, well, who is it owed to? Who's it owed to? Because the bank just print, they just print out more money. So I'm saying, who's it owed to? <laughs> Do you know 
you know what I mean? But um, I'm sure, I'm sure once upon a time, the Bank of England must have belonged to the people in this country. So it's another, it's another thing they must have sold off. I'm sure they're trying to sell off our stock market a few years ago. Anyway, guys, look, I've gone so far over on this video that, um, by 10 minutes, by the way, by 10 minutes. So, you know, but at least I've done one on Monday this, and, and I sh I'm going to do another one tomorrow. So that means that I, I should be up and, and get to my, get to my regular 10 minutes. Anyway, guys, my friends, this is by any means necessary. I'm Jim C. John Ribs. It was really nice to speak to you guys. Comments below.